Hello. <laughs> we just put that up in case oh, you care to you know guys. if you're on or not. Mm. But yeah. Yes. Well, I appreciate you all coming in. Like, what are yeah. you normally doing right now? I guess you're normally in class, probably. Eating lunch. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Early. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. yeah. I forgot how late it already is. Yeah. I'm thinking it's like 8.30 in the morning. Well, <laughs> our <laughs> seniors eat first, then our juniors. Mm -hmm. And we make the freshmen eat last, so... They get to you eat make earlier. <laughs> Poor it. freshman. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that that's all right. <laughs> so we got one senior, two yep. juniors. Yes. Were you thinking about your next steps? Are you thinking about more school? Are you thinking yeah, about like, going to the Yeah, definitely more world? school. Just okay. still waiting to hear back from some regular decisions. And then I'll make a decision in like yeah. mid April. School doing what? Uh, probably engineering. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Where are you looking at going? Um, really hoping on Notre Dame, but if I don't get in there, maybe Washington and Lee or yeah, okay, Clemson. Clemson. I grew up in South Carolina. I went to South Carolina from my undergrad, oh, so cool. they're direct rivals with Clemson. Yeah, you so are. hope you don't go there. Oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a great school. All right, and so you two are juniors. Are you yes. obviously you're thinking about the next steps? You got to be right. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, Especially these colonies. two. They're definitely thinking. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. now yeah, time <laughs> actually flies like really crazy whenever you get out mm -hmm. from school. So <clears throat> it, I still feel like I'm 20 years old, but I'm oh, 36, yeah. which mm -hmm. is wild. <laughs> yeah. Um, is it still set up to where like you take the SAT, ACT, all that kind of stuff in your junior year, right? So mm -hmm. you get your scores and you apply for senior year. So, right. We're going to yeah. take it in March 26th. March 26th, yeah. yeah. Which thing? ACT? ACT. Thank okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. How are you feeling about all that? Um, I started some math practice, but really I haven't done any in-depth studying. Um, I have some textbooks at home that I haven't touched on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah. Really. Math and science prep is definitely what I'm focusing on because this is always tank my score. So. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... How do you even study for something like that? That's kind of my question. There I mean, are certain hacks. There are certain things, tricks, strategies yeah. that you can learn to work around. Mm -hmm. And that helps you get the highest score. Yeah. I, I was always an A, B kind of student. Uh -huh. uh, but when it came to taking standardized tests, oh my gosh, horrible. Yeah, it's terrible. standardized like tests. Like I never are... felt prepared as much as I would study and everything else. You, there's a ton of uh, practice classes out now mm -hmm. and a ton of companies that have been for like I teach an English and reading ACT practice class um, so there's a lot more resources than there were when we were students as well yeah so. do you feel like standardized tests are actually accomplishing what they're trying to accomplish whenever we talk about pairing somebody uh -oh. from Kentucky he's going right to, to the Hawaii to these the, are the conversations that matter right yeah you know, like we can yeah. talk about all the other things too but um, I'm, I'm not a huge <laughs> I'm not a huge proponent for standardized testing I mean I, yeah. I understand why it exists um, but I don't think it always tests different levels of intelligence obviously mm -hmm. there you know so and I have students who are really really gifted but don't necessarily show that giftedness on a standardized test doesn't mean they're not gifted and so much of um, college funds are tied up with that ACT score, the SAT score. And, mm -hmm. and then you get into, is that fair for demographics and all of that? What do you wish was tested that isn't tested? Oh, critical thinking skills. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. How would you even put that on a piece of paper, I guess? And I think, I think it goes to writing and speaking so it would be mm -hmm. almost more like an interview like talking to somebody to see their ability to think on their feet and to work through problems and situations i mean yeah for me that's so much more important than i need to memorize these skills in math i need to get them down because you know they they've known them at some point but they may have forgotten them so yeah. now they're just cr cramming it in to get it do well on this one test so they can get you know the highest score so they can get into the school they want and it's not yeah yeah it's not it's what? a very frustrating experience. Extremely frustrating, especially <laughs> for students who struggle with standardized tests. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, you again, you could be a really strong student, straight A student, great work ethic, and then that test score doesn't show that. So. Yeah, that, that's what I was highlighting with myself. It's like I always felt like I was a strong student. But yeah. For some reason, showing up at 8 a.m. on a Saturday to some 
school I've never been to is uh, yeah. maybe not the best experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Luckily, Lexington Catholic and most schools, they give it to their students. So all of our students will take the ACT as juniors in our school. So they'll be where they're comfortable. They'll be given it by teachers they know. Mm -hmm. So that helps, I think. Did you, have you taken any of the tests yet? SAT or ACT? We've taken, um, okay, so Lexington Catholic mm -hmm. has their um, PSAT, has a student take oh, their right. PSAT yeah. in yeah. different years. Ninth and 10th grade, mm -hmm. yeah. So do you find that to be I've only true? Do you school. find that to be comfortable, like being on your home turf and with people in the it's room that you're yes. familiar it's, with? And, I think it's better, at least for me. I've had okay test scores, and um, we took the PSAT recently. So, yeah. But I haven't taken any other test outside of my school. All of the these three are extremely good test takers. Let's just yeah. say so. We're not we're not talking to the ones that struggle with the test. They are yeah. outstanding yeah. standardized test takers. But they're also smart and critical thinkers, and they have mm -hmm. they have it all. How do you feel like maybe some of those kind of skills have been taught to you in school mm. critical mm. thinking problem yeah. solving things mm. of that nature because um, you can't really do that on paper like we just discussed but you can have certain projects and, and things that maybe mm. work on that i mean i focus most directly on math because that's my weak area on math but math mm -hmm. and i like it when they make you do world word problems instead of setting it up directly for you because mm -hmm. yeah. that makes you work through, okay, what do I need to use in this problem to get the correct answer? Is this information usable? Is it completely unnecessary? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that's my that main helps. thing. Yeah. Hmm. What's been your experience? Um, well, uh, my focus is math and science. So like, I feel like in our science classes, we have a lot of hands-on type of learning, a lot of labs, a lot of experiments that we're doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of open-ended questions that we have to answer on our own. Like, it's not completely like, what's this plus this? It's actually yeah. like you have to interpret the data. And yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's good. As an English teacher, too, mm -hmm. a lot of the critical thinking happened in just the class discussions. You know, we're reading something. How do we interpret it? How do we apply it to life? You know, how do we take something that was written in the 1800s and critically think about it and make it relatable to our life and writing about that and so that's it's interesting yeah. that every subject area does critical thinking in a different way yeah mm -hmm. i'm curious are there any things that you wish um you did even more of in school like to help with some of those things just curious i'm just asking questions you don't have to I have wish, an answer <laughs> i actually wish i had like a little bit more um flexibility in what i can put in my schedule because there are like a couple of required classes and I did um, I was able to get more space for the exemplar scholars program because I'm in fine arts so I mm. took PE and health over the summer so I don't have to take it during the school year which I thought was really helpful for me but there um, are I guess some other required classes that I yeah. personally don't yeah. feel like I want to take over like um, there's a class in forensics um, that's a full year forensics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah it's really interesting and i don't have enough space in this year and next year to take it so i was a little bummed about that yeah mm -hmm. you're in fine arts what do you do um so with the exemplary scholars fine arts program we are able to take like different fine arts classes mm -hmm. in freshman year i took intro to art and then that gave me space to take photography and cer ceramics in sophomore year and now in junior year, we're doing honors art to prepare us for AP art next year. Yeah. She's a visual arts, fine arts, but we also have it in um, instrumental music, vocal music, and theater as yeah. well. So there's separate tracks within the fine arts exemplar program. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah I, yeah, I studied a lot of music. When I was in high school, we had a, I think it was called Schools Within a School. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it was basically kind of a similar is, kind of Yeah, yeah so. similar situation. Yeah. 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 That's really cool. Yeah. So she's our fine arts representative. But yeah, we have a ton of really cool electives. We have a lot of science electives, really, I've noticed yeah. more and more. Um, and Chaz is in the MST, so he's doing mm. the math, science, technology. And May is in the liberal arts program. So we have different electives offered. But you don't have to necessarily be in the program to take the classes. Some of them are directly for exemplar scholars, but others are open to everybody. Mm. So they get to be mixed. Together. And when you say more science right now, what does that mean? 
Oh, I, uh, our elective choices for science has increased over the last several years. So reason? we're offering just because of the increase in interest. So yeah, so overall. it's student driven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I'm thinking forensics, pathology, zoology, astronomy, anatomy, Nutri and there's like a nutritional, too. a nutritional science, science cool. class. I think yeah. oceanography is a new offering too. Is, is that I, I, marine oh, science something related? Yeah, to marine that. science. I've I saw that. Okay, so I'm hearing a lot of very narrow kind of things. What's the student body number? Like, how many people are in school? Total. Mm -hmm. mm. Seven something. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Around. Okay. So that, what's like an average <laughs> class size then? You're talking Real? forensics and oceanography. Like yeah. that's a lot of. It sounds like a lot of teachers. Sounds like a lot of. It is. Yeah. We students. we keep our class sizes pretty small. Um, the max class size you'd really see would be twenty five, and that would be huge. That would yeah. be like every seat taken. Mm -hmm. And we have classes that are very very small. Um, you know, eight. Yeah. We have three. I'm in we a have, five person AP Physics C class right now. Oh wow. Yeah. It's just all seniors, which is obviously very different than other kind of environments where it might be 25 yeah. kids yeah oh yeah definitely and in the public schools where my husband teaches you know he's got like 35 in a class so yeah so what do you think is the benefit of three to five students in a class oh gosh whenever i had small class i never had three to five but if i had 10 or 12 the benefit is just not only do you get to know your students on a deeper level because you have so much more one-on-one -on -one time with them but you can really cater to their individual strengths and help them with their individual weaknesses. So just, there's you know, there's no replacement for the small class size. I mean, it's just the number one benefit that you get from a smaller school. And yeah. our high schools, our public high schools are so big now in Lexington that having a smaller class size is one of the best perks of, you know, being at LexCath for sure. Yeah. So what do you think about small classes? Do you, do you feel that? I mean, have you, have you been in a class that is much larger? Um, I've had experiences with both, but okay. I do better with smaller class sizes because I have problems speaking up in front of people. Mm -hmm. So when there are less people to hear me, that makes me feel brave enough to say what I want to say yeah. and offer my ideas to the class. Is that just like a, a general thing, a general, dare I say, anxiety thing of, you know, I don't I really want to speak up. I or suppose, is it just the sheer number of people that's intimidating? I think it's just the sheer number of people yeah. because usually I'm, I like talking to people about what I think mm -hmm. and what I'm passionate about. But when there are so many people, I feel like I'm going to be judged or they might disagree in a way that I don't want to respond to. Yeah. And I don't like being mean to people. So I definitely I just, remember that being in school like the, the thing where you would go around the room and like okay now you pick up on the next paragraph and yeah. you read it out loud and do yeah. that whole nonsense you know <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like i remember sitting there for the other 30 people in the class judging how they were reading and going okay this kid's slow this kid doesn't know how to pronounce this right like <laughs> you can't help but think yeah. those kind of things and yeah. then now it's your turn and of course <clears throat> you project that onto yourself and like oh everybody's gonna be thinking the same thing about me and of course, then you mess up. Right. <laughs> so that was always me. Oh, I was always like pretty anxious about that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So how about you guys? You like class sizes being a lot smaller? Do yeah, you find a benefit? I definitely like getting to know my teachers better, you know, having more personal relationship with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Yep. For me, it's a little different. I do like, do you get like anxious? Like, um, similar to like wondering like oh what are they gonna think about what I'm gonna say but um, my favorite class right now to be in is my first period class and it's a almost like a 20 person class but it's me and all my friends mm. so I don't really mind mm -hmm. like, do you find yeah. that distracting yeah, yeah. Um, do you find that distracting being friends in there or do you yeah. find it helpful for maybe the opposite reason that May has talked about like you can actually be yourself and yeah. more comfortable. I really feel like I can be myself in that class. <laughs> and um, yeah, we laugh a lot in that class, but we do. We but we get work done. done. Yeah, we're in a group together. Actually, we're doing a presentation soon, but we each wrote papers about the Asian American experience in mm. our AP seminar research class. 
So, so it's been fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it has. Also education. Cool. I was going to ask, like, what other takeaways do you want us to have today, by the way, from this conversation? Well, I think <clears throat> just as being, you know, the director of the special academic programs, I mm -hmm. think it's, we really want the community to be aware of what we offer um, and that we have these special programs because I think sometimes it's rare that private schools can offer so many different diverse programs and that we have magnet honors level programs like the exemplars for students so they don't have to necessarily go to SCAPA for the fine arts or they have to go to Dunbar for MSD. We have that at our school. Um, but we also offer you know dual credit classes and we also offer a pathways of emphasis. So there's um, a lot of ways to achieve your academic goals and um, I think that you know, a lot of people just don't know. These are newer offerings, not mm -hmm. the exemplar program, but the other two are new things that we've recently started, so. And can you talk about the dual credit situation? Yeah. What does that really mean? So the dual credit <laughs> uh, is when students can take a college class, but it's taught on campus by one of our teachers. The teacher has to have a master's in the content area, mm -hmm. or at least 18 graduate credit hours. And the students take it on campus in our regular time. Uh, and then upon completion of the course, they get simultaneous high school and college credit. Uh, the really cool thing about that is that we're doing it through BCTC because all of the credits transfer to UK easily and a lot of our students apply to UK, but they also will transfer to most regional schools. Um, and so not only do they get a head start on taking some of those core classes, that it's kind of like Olivia said, you know, you have to take these core required classes. You don't want to, you want to jump into your major so that when they go to college, they can bypass, you know, English 101 or 102 or their foundational science class or their foundational math class, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important to offer it here because Kentucky, through Keys, uh, offers two free classes for every high school student per year. So our students are taking them and they're not even paying for them so wow yeah so it's also a okay. huge college savings for parents yeah so somebody that's doing dual credits how many credits in college do they actually graduate high school with on average well we just started it so we're okay. w right right now we're only offering english and physics next year we're at, we're adding a chemistry and a algebra class so okay. they could have potentially um, so they could have wiped out undergrad math if they can wipe out the undergrad program. English, undergrad yeah. math, and sometimes undergrad science. So yeah, a, a big chunk of freshman year. But we don't want to replace the college experience by any means. We just want to be able to give them, you know, some of the basics so that they can jump into their major a little more quickly. Yeah. Well, I was going to say jump into the major. I mean. Gen Eds are like forty percent of a, yeah. a college degree program. So yeah. yeah, if you can get that out of the way. And yeah, and and for much, else. I mean, for free or for, yeah, I was you know, say much for reduced costs because of keys and other yeah. things. Why not? Exactly. So that we're really glad to excited to have that as an opportunity, and so offering more classes. Although you do have to have, we're we don't want our students to go off campus and be taught by other people or have to, you know do that so we are use it, utilizing the faculty that we have that have the correct uh, degrees so that we can just offer, we're kind of catering yeah. it towards our staff. Hmm. I just had a random thought, but mm. you said that a the teacher would have to have a minimum of what, eight hours in a master's degree program, right? 18. To be able to, 18 hours, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go to the actual college and take a similar class, probably going to have a TA that is yeah. working on a master's that doesn't even meet <clears throat> that requirement. So I, I, yeah. I think those things are always kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just making a comment more than asking yeah, you a question, yeah. but it's kind of funny how, how that ends up working. Yeah. 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 I mean, hopefully the TA is working under somebody with that degree, but, yeah. uh, and that, that's more in science classes that happens, but yeah. Yeah. And you, you obviously had that experience. I can tell. I've been the TA, had, I've been the faculty, okay. I've been on all parts of yeah. that. Yeah, to see it. Yeah, um, and yeah it's I'm, really interesting. I'd like to have a TA for my English college classes, but we don't get them, so. No? Consider yourself lucky. What would you all want the TA grading. for? Oh, the grading part? Yeah. 
the most. No, important. you can't really supplement. <laughs> you can't really have someone grade your own essays. So I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's true. It's different than grading labs. Yeah. Were you good, Chaz? Were you going to say something about it? Oh, no, it looked I was like just you were laughing. Yeah. <laughs> the T. <GM. laughs> Being taught by the TA. Yeah. I, you know, a lot of people don't take TA seriously because they think, well, I don't have the professor here, but TAs know a lot. Know a lot. Yeah. What do you think about that? Have you even given that any thought about like who's actually going to teach you when you get to the next level? No. Just curious. Not Maybe not. <laughs> I know I didn't think about any of that stuff. Where I go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're just going to go and whoever's in the room is going to teach, right? I'll figure it <laughs> yeah. out. I'll figure it out. And you just do whatever they say. Yeah. And hopefully be good. Yeah. Just it's funny on the other side of degrees, though, and having gone through those things, yeah. some of the things that you witness or you think about that are just feels like I don't know why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll stay away from some of that, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so talk to me about some, some more of the other new programs. Um, so then we began Pathways of Emphasis during COVID, and so that was kind of was a hard thing to kind of get rolling. But we now offer a Pathway of Emphasis in Business and Engineering. Uh, and it basically, it's not an application-type program or anything like that. It's a sequence of courses that students can take to earn an essential major in business or engineering. And it, the idea is that they dabble in those subjects and in those classes to see if they're interested, pri interested prior to college so that, oh, I really do love business. I think I'm on major in it. Or, oh, no, I don't. So what does business look like? Um, in a so, high school kind of setting. Yeah, so we offer principles of business, business mm -hmm. marketing, sports marketing. We have an internship program where they can go off site and they can complete internships. They can, can they can also do um, co op, so working a job. Uh, and so we have accounting one, we have accounting two. So just kind of the basic and fundamentals. Some of this takes them off school grounds to actually go and. Yeah, and the internship program, which is new too as well. Um, does that as well and now in the exemplar scholars program there's internships and there's research mentorships and mm -hmm. that's always been a staple for our exemplar program mm -hmm. but now we've kind of created a new internship program for every student so now if they want to partake they can join this class but they have they do meet on campus they don't just like leave forever yeah. um, and they go and do their internship and then they have days where they meet and they discuss what they're doing and their hours are followed up on and they have presentations so so have any of you engaged with this yet? Chaz? I didn't okay. do that, but I did the exemplar mentorship two summers ago. So how I was that? What did that look like? I worked in the lab at UK with the head of the mechanical engineering department there, Dr. Okay. Scott Stevens. And I was doing an experiment where I tested these like micro needle nozzles and I what did is that. It's <laughs> so it's like basically what you put on the end of a syringe. Okay. And this can be used for like pharmaceutical purposes, like making different solutions. Mm -hmm. And so I like did a test where I dipped it in something that was supposed to make it super hydrophobic. So like the fluid wouldn't stick to the side. And I tested to see if it created like a more precise or a smaller droplet. Did it? <laughs> it made it it made it smaller but okay. the precision wasn't as expected oh, yeah, it was okay. a little inconsistent with like the size and what did that look like uh it was, was it all in the lab yeah or so was it was it... like this i set up like a flow network and there was this machine that like pushed the end of the syringe at a mm -hmm. constant rate so like the water was coming out at the same rate for each trial that i did and mm -hmm. I like videoed it with my phone mm -hmm. and it has like a timer running and I used like the time it took to determine how big the droplet was and like the consistency of you know, the amount that came out. So is this a thing where like at the beginning of the semester you talk about like one one project that you want to accomplish and now you're working or the, the summer I guess you said. Yeah. And then you're working with the professor from UK and he is he, helping you actually so he kind of gave me the together. assignment he kind of okay. gave me the assignment and then we worked together to create an experiment to test the problem and then mm. now i'm working on compiling all my data into a poster i'm going to present this spring so you're still showcase. working on this and this yeah. was like mm -hmm. seven months ago uh -huh. or more yeah cool. he actually so started his yeah early. i did mine early like okay. 
they normally do a junior summer. Uh-huh. He did his sophomore summer because he's busy. So yeah. he's, but yeah, now all the senior MST students are compiling their data that they did with their research mentors and they're putting them into a scientific poster and they'll display those at their senior showcase in the spring. So mm. what's the senior showcase? Um, it's a time where we have one for our fine arts and we mm-hmm. have one for our MST and we're going to have one for our liberal arts next year for the first time because our liberal arts program is new as well, which I can talk about, but, or newer, but it's, um, it's a time for our students to display like the culmination of their academic growth, whether that be in the senior, you know, mentorships that they did for our MST. They, it's almost like a science fair where they have their posters all around their mentors come, the community comes. And uh, we have a couple that actually present on stage and talk about what their findings, what they found during their research mentorship. And um, just a celebration of them as well. We have a food and, you know, just kind of yeah. hang out. And then our fine arts, it's really cool because they, they have like a really cool showcase of all their talents. Mm-hmm. And so we have, you know, well, Olivia will be presenting her AP portfolio and all of her drawings and discussing the themes. They all have a theme. Um, we have singers who will be singing and pianists who will be playing piano and we have theater students who will be acting and it's really yeah. fun. That's so, really cool. Yeah. Well, and I was going to ask high level, that, what does that look like going to Lexington Catholic versus a regular public kind of program? You mean For like... For anybody that doesn't really know the difference as far as like be- curriculum and just be- day to day. Between like the magnet programs at public school versus like our magnet program. Yeah. I mean, or... any of it, anybody that's not familiar with, you know, yeah. something that's a Catholic school versus something that's public school. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, our curriculum, I don't know how to say this. I think one of the biggest di- just differences is we're all trying to ach- do the same thing. We're all trying to give the best education we can for our students in Kentucky. So, you know, I mean, it's, but I think that our, program is smaller it's much much smaller and so you just you can do more and you can offer more to each individual student when your program is small um but like academically we try to be on par with the offerings we offer every ap science class there is to offer and some of our public schools don't even do that which is huge Um, we try to offer as many fine arts as we possibly can of course our size does maybe possibly limit us at times but really when i look at our comparing our curriculum we try to match our curriculum and offer even more than our public schools do so we try to remain as competitive as possible Um, but in general i think the feeling and the vibe is just we're a family because we're small and we know each other and i think the kids with the kids the students the young men and women would agree uh, with that and we feel it as a faculty we feel it as a staff um, what I taught before I was in this position I felt it with all of my students you just you know them you know them as people mm-hmm. not just as students and you f- you they feel like your kids yeah, yeah. and what were you gonna say? Um, I was just gonna say like I've gotten really close with all the kids in my grade in MST and like a lot of them I probably wouldn't even associate with in the first place because we're not really the same type of people, but Mm -hmm. I'm still good friends with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a a great benefit, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Being put into a situation where you basically have to get over your differences and Mm -hmm. and learn how to get along. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's like microcosm of life. (laughs) You know, that's what you're about to walk into. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about, do you girls feel the family environment? Yes. You definitely Absolutely. know everyone by name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. I love, every, okay, I love all of the students I'm with in my year at liberal arts. Um, I don't really know the sophomores that well, but, mm-hmm. you know, I think I think we get along very well, too. But I mean, the neat thing about the Exemplar Scholars Program is it's small. So they have some classes that they take together, and it really helps them form those relationships. And like Chaz said, even if they maybe have nothing in common but being in that program together, they really are together all four years in certain classes. And so, you know, they form these friendships that they may not have otherwise formed. But then they're not locked into only being with those students. Yeah, like the people that I hang out with are 
totally different from the people in the program. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can have friends. Like I'm friends on, with kids on the basketball team, the football team. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and I'm able to play, I play yeah. golf and lacrosse. So I have free time. It's not like I'm completely swamped with work. Yeah. All the time. And that I think is one of the bigger benefits too of our program. We try to make it so that they can really be students, like a holistic student. We don't want them to just be doing this program. We want them to be able to be in band if they're a liberal arts student like May. We want Chaz to be able to play um, his sports. And um, I think that at, in our public schools, and sometimes those programs are so intense that students find it hard to make, strike a balance. And we also want them to be, you know, kids still and, and hang out yeah. with their friends and be, you know, a sister and a brother and all those things. So yeah. I'm curious, what's the vibe amongst faculty? You know, when you talk about that many courses, mm-hmm. there's only one pot of money to yeah. be able to pay faculty to right. do all the courses. So I'm sure there's a lot of like, Hey, what if we don't do this course now? Let's yeah. do this one because X, Y, Z. Yeah. Right? And you got to get along and actually be, mm-hmm. One of the, I mean, one of the greatest things about working there is that you really, it is a family. Mm -hmm. And so you do, I don't know, you just, you get along because you have this mission to make the school succeed. And, and it's just, it's different than being in a public school because it depends so much on your faculty and staff. It depends on fundraising. You know, we don't have the funds that the public schools get. So it depends on all of us. We have to make it work. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's not a given yeah. that it works. Um, but yeah, I mean, with all those offerings, um, you know, it, it, we have a balance we have to strike. Some of those fun classes we only offer every other year. And that's because we can't offer it every year because of our, you know, but we're also looking at our population and, um, you know, going down. If, if our class sizes go down, if our student population goes down, then the demand for teachers is less. So it is a balance. It's all. But, you know, the vibe among faculty and staff is that we all just want it to work. We want it to succeed and we'll do whatever we can to make that happen, whether that's, oh, I'm not going to be able to teach that class this year or this program maybe isn't working right now. You know, we want it to we want the success holistically. So we'll try to do what we can to make sure that happens. Yeah, well, that's obviously important because yeah. students can feel whenever the, the adults mm-hmm. in the room are, are not getting along. So oh, yeah. That's yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're a family, so we might fight too, but we love each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get back to the science thing. You said it's student-led that science it seems like it's increasing in interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any idea where that's coming from? Um, I just think the pressure overall. We're such a science-heavy at STEM. You know, it's all over media. Um, it's become the trend and popular. And so I think that there's pressure a lot of our students feel to do that. Um, I also think we have a large demographic of students who come from the science and medical field. Their parents are in it. And so it's mm-hmm. also just something that they've always had. They've been around it. They've been around yeah. it, yeah. 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 And business is becoming more popular too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And engineering. So. so you said, yeah, where do you feel that? I just... I mean, I like doing math. I'm weird like that. I like solving problems. Yeah, and he just likes Why do you like math? Where'd that come from? I don't know. I, I, just curious. Li- I mean, <laughs> not to hate on any English, but <laughs> I like I like when there's a clear right or wrong answer, and I like going through a process to get to that answer. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Respect. <laughs> well, she was in the I yeah. was actually in the MST for a year, um, freshman year, because, I mean, both of my parents are doctors. And I do want to go into the medical field, even though I'm in liberal arts now. But I just kind of realized that I don't want to do that right now. I don't want it to be so set in stone. I want to learn not just about how the human body works physically, but how it works in the mind because being a doctor is not about knowing every single, I don't know, um, rare disease, mm-hmm. or every single treatment. It's also about um, knowing how to treat the person, factoring in their personal values, mm-hmm. right? So you need to know how to talk to people. You need to know how they work and how best to approach certain things. 
Yeah. And I think that's what you get in liberal arts. What a mature she's, she's yeah. gonna be a good. She's gonna be it's my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> when I, yeah. Oh my God. She'll be my doctor in May for president. <laughs> well, yeah. So it's interesting because you can switch programs if, you know, I mean, like some students think, oh, I'm applied to a program. I'm in it for good. And if it's not the right fit, we can make adjustments. And with her, you know, she would be a great as an MST student. She would do wonderful. And she did do wonderful. But she decided she wanted to, she loves all the things. So she wanted to do liberal arts, which is a broader base looking at you know, focusing on really all the humanities. And so we made that switch and it was a better fit for her now, even though she's probably gonna become doctor or president. <laughs> but Well, I think it's cool too, because you don't, apparently they're not locked into a particular track and as interests yeah, evolve yeah. and change, you can do that. Exactly, yeah. Which is important because you're gonna be different whenever you go to school in two years. Exactly. You're gonna maybe everything you like now, you don't like, mm -hmm. you have no idea. Things just happen. Just mm -hmm. branching out. Mm -hmm. seeing what I actually have a passion for. Yeah. yeah. So. Any other programs you want to highlight? Well, the liberal arts program is new. Um, it came, mm -hmm. it, it came to fruition during COVID as well. So we didn't really, we weren't able to kind of put it out there and say, Hey, look what we have, but we always have had our MST and our fine arts program, um, for several years now. And then the liberal arts came about because that's really becoming a push. I mean, in general, students will receive an, a liberal arts education at Lexington Catholic, but the liberal arts program really focuses on um, diving deeper into the ancient text and the quote unquote good books, and they have a Latin requirements. And, um, and it's really about like studying what it means to be human, I think you know, critical thinking and writing, and um, they have a community service project, which May can talk about here, which is really cool. And they're also, she's getting ready to do two internships this summer. So rather than a research mentorship, they do two shorter internships in fields of their interest, just to kind of see, oh, well, am I interested in this? What does it look like on a day-to-day -day basis? And they will present on that during their senior showcase. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, it's really more of like this sort of holistic approach to humanity that we study in the liberal arts program. And it's, it's new and not a lot of people know about it and we really want to get it out there because it's yeah. so important. I mean, when I was still in school over at UK, we were talking about liberal, liberal arts programs becoming even more yeah. important in, yes. in changing curriculum to align to that. So where do you think that's coming from? Is it less of an emphasis on particular content and just a little bit more like high level thinking and you can kind of plug the content in. Yeah. Yeah. I the think back end of that. Yeah. I think the push is high level thinking, critical thinking. And I, I really think because of the added social media and the distance and COVID, the distance that put between us, hmm. I think that like the need for that humanity, the humanities approach, what is it to be a human? What does that mean to be a good person, to be a citizen? is so important now and so i think for our school that's kind of what we're focused on and um you know what where do we start as a you know human population and where are we now and where are we going and really the liberal arts is studying all of that and i think it's so crucial and so Did you cool say social media yeah in what way you no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, so uh, just the the social the social media. I mean, COVID obviously put physical distance barriers uh -huh. between us, but social media either you know it obviously overly connects you in one way, but it can also distance you in others. And that you know we're no longer face to face talking and making eye contact necessarily and doing you know just that in person interpersonal skills. You know, as an English teacher, I saw I've seen a drastic decrease in interpersonal skills, those innate interpersonal skills since social media came to fruition, which came to fruition when I was in the middle of teaching. And so the ability to just talk face to face and um, have a conversation and be human and, and empathetic, the empathy is a huge part of our liberal arts track too, is so important. And I just think that social media, you know, with the perfectionist mentality and the idea that we need to look a certain way and we want to have a certain image and it's so crucial you know, that, that puts a lot of pressure on our students and it's not realistic and it's not real life. And so it's so <laughs> important to remember that and ground, come, be ground, ground ourselves. Yeah. Do you feel any of that? Um, 
I do feel that a lot of people my age don't really know how to talk to people. Like they just rely on their parents to communicate for them and do things for them. Like so when talking to who? When talking to, I don't know, adults, mm -hmm. even okay. each other. Well, maybe not so much each other because um, people are similar. They emulate each other. But that, and I think that's part of the reason why liberal arts is so important because it forces you to look deep into the human mind and why we work this way. And it's rediscovering something that we've lost because of social media, because mm -hmm. of COVID. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's definitely helped me become a more empathetic person and a more, um, a better critical thinker. Yeah. Yeah, social media is Generalized. such a complicated thing, yeah. you know, because now you're aware in real time of things that are happening around the world. Mm -hmm. First hand. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're aware of things that are happening in real time. You're getting to see it in unvarnished way. Uh, we saw this in Russia with people coming out and, you know, some of the conflict in Ukraine and Russia. Yeah. People in Ukraine are seeing what's going on, and yeah, it's just, yeah. it was evolving an actual war as right. it's happening. Right, yeah. seeing Wild. it in real time. Um, you get exposed to people that don't look or talk like you, or you know, believe in the same things. So, like, there's this it's like a gigantic textbook, you know, that you get to explore. But obviously, mm -hmm. there's like there's benefits and a lot of yeah, but there's the dangerous negatives. side to that, of yeah. course. Yeah, um, and like you said, the loss of like the interpersonal component. I mean, you could be a keyboard warrior and sit there and be a troll and yeah and it doesn't feel like there's any real consequence to doing no. some right that stuff, right which is this not good the bullying it quote almost unquote. encourages yeah. cowardice yeah so, yeah like yeah. I, I don't know i've said this a lot but i i feel like we're putting a lot of uh difficult conversations on the table at the same time yeah which feels like divides and feels like a real challenge but the optimistic side of me, I think, is like, I think it's going to be good on the other side of all of this. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some unfortunate victims, uh, real and, and not real. But um, mm -hmm. in the wake of some of this stuff, I'm trying to be vague on purpose, but yeah. Um, hmm. But I think it's good. I mean, you're exposed to people that are around the world right now. When like, I grew up. I graduated high school two years before an iPhone was invented. Hmm. So we didn't have that level of connectivity, you know? So we were pretty limited to geography and the people that are around you and the people that are in right. your school. But now you can be friends with, you know, virtually anybody. Yeah. Were yeah. you going to say something? For me, like from day to day, it's mostly just putting your phone down and getting to my work because... Well, they're made to be stimulating, so. Yeah. Just yeah. working on that right now. Where do you get that, that discipline, though, to actually want to put a phone mm -hmm. down? Not a lot of people have that. So I kind of don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I'm, uh, I think my screen time is a little outrageous. Um, what is your screen time? Do you look at it on your phone? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Your iPhone no. settings. <laughs> and I saw it, and I was like, okay. How many hours yeah. is it right now? <laughs> Well, okay, as like, on the average, <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe like four hours. Okay. But, um, that's, not, that's, not that's, that's not bad. I've seen worse. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> like, but um, I saw this color filter setting where I just turn off the colors, and it's a, like, a little easier to put down. Oh. I can see something mm. on my face. That's interesting. Oh, is that why your phone's going yeah, but That's you my, still my had to have a certain head. level of awareness that this is a potential problem, so I'm going to do something to actively yeah. try to limit myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't have that <laughs> that capability. Yeah. What were you going to say? I mean, yeah, I'll just be like scrolling on TikTok or Instagram and be like, this is such a waste of my time. I need to mm -hmm. do something productive. So you're aware that you're wasting your Sometimes, time, but you're still scrolling. Yeah. Yes. I get it. Like yeah, it's <laughs> the addiction of it. It's yeah. hard to break. You can't stop. You're trying to stop it. What are you... <laughs> I am kind of curious. What kind of things are you seeing on like TikTok and Instagram right now? What kind of content? Is it motivational? Is it no, gym just, stuff? Is it I school mean, stuff? <laughs> is it funny memes? Like, yeah, just where like are you funny, seeing funny stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For okay. me? Okay, I actually did delete Instagram Sports. last night because I was like, Sports. Sports, yeah. You I deleted what? Into, like, Formula One. <laughs> a lot of reels. Formula One? 
Oh, recently. <clears throat> it's fun. Good job. You, you seen that uh, <laughs> yes. Netflix show? Drive to Survive. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that that's makes, why I need to put it. It makes the sport everything. look a lot cooler than it actually is. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, I, were you actively looking for F one stuff, or did well, it just show up? Well, it's like Instagram, you know, they curate things for you. So <laughs> yeah, like, you follow like the McLaren team. You follow the F one account. It pops up, and confused. But were you like, already yeah. following McLaren and stuff? Like on Instagram? Yeah. Oh yes, on my account. Okay, so where did your interest in in that come from? <laughs> I'm I'm genuinely no curious answer. because F1 has been trying to break into this demographic, this demo, yeah, yeah for a long time, and it looks yeah. like they finally have. <laughs> okay, I feel like this is a bit of a tangent. However, that's all right. Um, I did watch the first two episodes of Drive to Survive, and I could kind of feel like what you're talking about, like the American reality TV show kind of editing, mm-hmm. yeah. kind of storyline. But uh-huh. I just think it's really interesting, and I just like following the drivers. Like, oh, it's so cool. Like, <laughs> this is exactly why I think Taylor Swift and Jason Kelsey are a PR. Jason Kelsey. Travis, Kelsey. Jason, Jason. Well, yeah, that would well, be weird if that. Came yeah, out. yeah, it, that Travis. Uh, that it's a PR situation. Mm-hmm. Now I thought that since oh. it was like the 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 popular yeah. thing, but I think there's an interesting confluence of things. You got Taylor who still needs more listens. To stay at the top of her game. Yeah. You have Travis, who's about to retire. Yeah. Uh, and he needs... I think he's going to turn the way of, like, Michael Strahan, John Cena. The, you know, yeah. athletes turned entertainers. Entertainers. And for sure. Actors and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, he totally... He's definitely one so of he those. Needs, yeah. yeah, he's got to sure up something after the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the NFL, which has been trying to break into Europe for... Oh, yeah. 10 years they've mm-hmm. been trying to do one game every season over there. Right. They did, like, and five this year, it felt like... Mm-hmm. It, yeah, but it's not more. sticking yet. No. And so how do you do that? You do it through story. You do it in a back end kind of way. Mm-hmm. Like F1 is like, well, do you know all the rules about racing for F1? So I, maybe because you, maybe you've gone down the rabbit hole, but you didn't start with rules, right? You started with stories is what it sounded like. Yes, I did. Oh, well, OK. It's because Bianca Bustamante, it's because she's the first Filipino female oh. driver to be signed. To McLaren's development driver program, and that's where it all started. Oh, so okay. Yeah. I'm half, my mom's Filipino, so it really just. So there was a connection there. There's a story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's where so, it all started. In a similar way, I think that Taylor Swift is the soft introduction of American football to people that don't know American football. Yeah. To yeah. introduce yeah, actually, football so. through a secondary person like Travis. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah she yeah, yeah, already has the audience that's over there. So if you just say football player, football player, football player, NFL, 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 you do that enough, people are going to be interested in mm-hmm. figuring out what does that guy do? Yeah. Oh, football. What? That's cool. Right. Like NF or like F1 racing in America. I think it's the same backwards way of getting to a demo. Yeah, for so sure. We'll see. Well, my 11 year old niece had a Taylor Swift Super Bowl party. So if that tells you anything, she would have yeah. never watched no. the Super Bowl if it hadn't no. been for no. Taylor Swift. It's wild. So. So am I way off base, am I crazy for thinking it's PR stuff? Wow. Is it real? I mean, I don't know. Is there a relationship we'll real? I think, it might it real? Have, I think it might have been real at, at first. I mean, it might still be real, but they've definitely taken it. <laughs> to the next level. They're trying to maximize profits yeah. from... Oh, yeah. This is why I don't you don't have to say that because I said that. No, it's definitely true. It's definitely true. I mean, yeah, Taylor Swift has brought like so many viewers if you like... Like look at the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of like new audience. Yeah. Yeah. But um Did you think we would talk about this today? No. No. When you come in and talk about school. <laughs> no. <this is laughs> kind of devolves into other things. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. Do you have any other things that people should know about, you know, being a student at Lexington Catholic that you want to share? I have um I actually have a lot of fun in the exemplary fine arts program i am visual and because there's like band there's music like what you said before mm-hmm. um yeah and theater yeah. um i can't speak for all of them but i have a lot of fun with my fine arts program i love art i think it's fun i like to um really the drawing point for me for fine arts was the fact that i could take so many arts classes by taking the summer classes mm-hmm. and yeah i just really appreciate the opportunity 
Yeah. yeah, exemplars are allowed to take some summer classes and nobody else can do that. And so it opens up their schedule for their extra requirements. They take above yeah. and beyond the graduation requirements. So they have to have these summer classes. They can, they can take some core classes like health and PE, some of those state requirements, economics and computer apps in the summer. So it opens up their schedule so that she can take more art classes or he can take more science classes or she can take. Yeah. Hmm. So that helps accommodate them. Yeah. I think I've been able to take seven science classes throughout high school, which like I definitely wouldn't have been able and to do. You only need three. He only needs three to graduate yeah. in yeah. Kentucky. <laughs> He's taken seven, and most of them have been AP. Yeah, I was gonna ask. So, do you get the credit? But apparently, yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chaz is getting the credit. That's I've cool. Done, yeah. yeah, done good enough on the tests so far. Good. Yeah. May anything? Um. I can't really speak from like his standpoint because mm -hmm. liberal arts is new. I'm part of the first class. Oh, tell him about the project you guys are doing. Yes, real the quick. community service the community project. Community service thing. Yeah, thank that's you. that was actually one of the tipping points for me. I was like, do I want to switch from MST to liberal arts? And I saw that they required a community service project, and I was like, absolutely. So we brainstormed last year, and we came up with revamping the school library because no one has been mm -hmm. keeping it up for I think at least ten years. So we've just been cleaning off the shelves, finding um, in broken books or things that need to be repaired. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to remove anything that is a little too, I'll say, raunchy for a school library. And then we'll host a book drive, hopefully, <laughs> to gotcha. yeah, get cool. more books and in And we've there. reclaimed that space because we have our, with our new build, we have a new Highmark Center. So our Highmark Center that kind of was in our old library space has moved out into their new space. So we have our old library is back. So we're- What is the Highmark Center? What does that mean? So our Highmarks program, and I think um, we'll probably have our director come and do a podcast, but it is for all of our students who are neurodivergent or have uh, learning differences. So okay. it allows them to have, you know, what they would have in public schools, like an accommodation plan, that type of thing. Um, but we have like tutoring, anyone can use the Highmark Center. They can go there for tutoring, extra studying, but then those students who need that extra help also have plans and we have uh, educators there to help them be successful and meet them where they're at. And so that's been, that's really grown huge. Yeah. Our school's grown a lot from that. So Highmarks is in their new center in our new build that has just been complete completed and so the library is going to be revamped back into a library we just kind of ran out of space that's cool and, good work so, yeah it's very small i so, love the new center what's that i love the new center we have nice. these, yeah. these study rooms and like the soundproof doors like chloe did her presentation like as a just a demo for us so she could practice and like the sound soundproof doors wrong. we could use those here right now <laughs> yeah, <Go ahead>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you just just do your homework while hanging out it's yeah. so spacious. Mm -hmm. You can get a little sunlight if you go into the corner. Yeah, there's it's lots of windows. Very, nice. yeah. very modern. And then upstairs is a bunch of science rooms, which haven't been moved into yet. But in yeah. you know, state-of-the-art labs, which will be great, unfortunately. Chaz won't get to use those. But, <laughs> um, That's how it always works, man. You yeah. leave, and yeah. they bring all the cool stuff. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so. so what does uh, admission look like? Who's a, Can anybody try to go to the school is yeah. there a certain program that you have to do first like i have no idea what it looks like no anybody can apply um there is an application general application and fill out it's all online now digital and um and it's easy we make it easy and we welcome everyone to apply to licensing catholic mm -hmm. don't have to be catholic i think about 40 percent of our population is not catholic so and how much um i mean you have the word catholic so how much does religion pop up in? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a faith-based Christian environment. I think you feel that in our halls. You feel that in the family and the community uh, sense. Uh, all of our students have to take religion every year. So they take a full year of theology every year. It looks different based on their grade level. We have mass that we go to. The students have spiritual retreats that they go to. We have something called search, which is... Uh, an actual retreat that they go away. Are you girls going on search? I'm going okay. on search, yes. Um, did you ever go on search? No. And, yeah. Okay. 
I couldn't do on spring either because lacrosse. But. Oh, lacrosse, yeah. Um, but they actually go away. It's like a r- spiritual retreat, and it's pretty amazing, and they really become close, kind of like a mini camp experience, I think. But um, So, you know, it's a big part of it, but I think that, um, you know, we have a lot of teachers and a lot of students who aren't Catholic, and I don't think they ever feel like it, Catholicism is being forced on mm-hmm. them, rather just this... Um, <clears throat> community just this loving community of like acceptance we'll accept you no matter who you are and we want you here and um that's what we try to and you can speak to that if you want so we have um a great like uh, what he we call the pastor of our church? chaplain yeah chaplain, chaplain. 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 Father, father norman, norman? father norman He's is awesome. amazing he really yeah. keeps up morale and um gets everyone interested and everything in spiritual life yeah mm-hmm. we host lift I think every Thursday and it's just a wonderful time for everyone to get together and listen to this speaker t- um, talk about his or her faith in a different different way every week so yeah Father cool. Norman is our campus priest essentially and mm-hmm. he's awesome and raps his homilies and sings <laughs> and I mean like he's just so cool and he does daily masses um, yeah. well not every day of the week but Tuesday Wednesday and Friday and I love going to those they're and very nice. He does lift, and that's mm-hmm. like the student-led. What does it stand for? Uh, living in faith together. Thank you. <laughs> and it's like the student-led kind of group, and they meet in the morning. He has speakers and breakfast and stuff like that. So there's a lot of opportunities. Our spiritual life department is amazing. Rachel Scanlon and Father Norman are a part of that, and they have. I mean, you can talk about how many community service hours yeah. you guys have had, but, like, <laughs> it's like, every week there's multiple. Always. Does school start at 2 a.m. and end at midnight? <laughs> no. I know. Pack all this in. I, I know. <laughs> and talk about the clubs we have. Time we didn't even mention man. the clubs. Art, yeah. you know, she could go off about archery and yeah. art club oh and, gosh. you know. But, yeah, the community service hours that they rack up. Um, we have a minimum requirement, but everyone always way over, yeah. you know, surpasses that because we're always doing something in the building, community service, outside of the building. Um, and I think that's that's really special. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, I, I'm really glad you all were able to come by and, yeah. and share your experience today. I'm sure you're happy not to be in school at the moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take a little break. What am I missing right now? Yeah. They're really? probably <laughs> they're probably all stressed actually. Like, what am I missing? No, you're good. Okay. No, you're I mean good. it's a push, but Should I'll catch up. With, I'll yeah. catch up eventually. How long can this go? I yeah. just gotta be back at. <laughs> gotta be back for ten. physics. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Physics well, test. And where can people learn more or learn about the application process? Yeah. Well, we have LexingtonCatholic.com. So you can go to our website. Um, the application is there. Um, there's a lot of links to various programs to check out. We also have our uh, Facebook page, so um, you can just knock on our door. We'll let you in. Too. Cool. All right. Sounds <laughs> Come great. Come for a tour. And, <laughs> when's so. uh, when's like the right window of time to actually consider applying? Mm. Surely that's so. Up yeah, soon. now. Um, <laughs> yeah, everyone's getting their applications in now. Usually throughout the fall. Um, and then heavy push in January and February. Yeah. So cool. But yeah. Good. Well, thank you again. Really thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We and good luck. Talking. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Lexington Business Show. Go right now, rate and review the podcast. It's how we grow and thrive and how we get more listeners and get to do a lot more cool stuff here on the show. Thank you.